shooting a short video to show um, how to collect plants, basically. Um, so Citari viridis, uh, which we have here, um, is becoming a model organism for studying C4 photosynthesis. Um, and with an increase in interest in this among geneticists, um, we've had a lot of people asking, uh, basically, what do I do to collect it? Um, just because, you know, obviously, some geneticists don't have exposure to that branch of sort of herbarium-oriented biology. So this video will just show how to collect a plant, how to record the data, um, and we'll also show you how to collect seed for germlines, also for looking at a uh, population genetic type stuff. So you find your plant, that's the first thing you have to do. It's usually pretty easy, it grows, you know, along concrete sidewalks and, you know, and, and cracks and asphalt and stuff, so it's, it's pretty ubiquitous. Uh, once you find it, you want to have some kind of notebook, so I have a collection notebook here. Um, you want to record, obviously, what it is, where you found it. So in this case, uh, we're at the University of Missouri St. Louis in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we're in front of the Benton building uh, next to the greenhouse here. Um, so we would write that down. Um, we would note the habitat, so growing along a concrete sidewalk. Uh, we would give the coordinates using a GPS device. Most people have a handheld GPS device. If you don't, um, you can also just note where you collected it and then find the coordinates using Google Maps or Google Earth or something like that. Um, you also want to note um, any characters that you think won't survive when you press the plant and dry it. So often, like flower color is something that you want to write down. Obviously, you don't have to do that for Centauria. Uh, another thing, sometimes the panicles are sort of drooping. That's something I like to write down um, because that doesn't always make it to the sheet. Um, then finally, you want to give it some identifier. Typically, what people do is use their last name and then a number. Uh, so if you've never made a collection before, you would just use you know Smith 1 and keep going up as you make more collections. Uh, and then finally, the date. Um, so after you've written all those things down, say, I'm calling this collection Smith One. Um, we're gonna pull the plant, which I actually already did, so we don't have to do it here. Um, so this is a plant that's been placed into the press. And really the only thing you have to do, um, okay, so I should explain the press first, sorry. Uh, the press is just made out of you know, slats of wood like this. It's a pretty simple thing. There are instructions on the internet about how to make them if you want to make your own. Usually biology departments have them. Um, and then you just use pieces of cardboard that are cut to the same size. Um, and you can also use uh, pieces of blotter paper to suck out any moisture. Although with Satari you don't really need these because they're pretty dry plants. Um, so you get your newspaper, you set the plant in it, and depending on the size, you may have to bend uh, some of the uh, peduncles or the whole plant um, to make it fit. In this case, this is sort of a medium-sized Atari viridis. It has one peduncle, the main one that's just a little bit too long. So we have to bend that down to make it fit in the press. Um, you fold up your newspaper, take anything, putting in blotter paper, cardboard, whatever set it down on top. Make sure that everything is under the, the cardboard. You might have to get someone to help you. It's sometimes hard to do with just two hands, depending on how, how much material there is. Uh, then you set it in here. Oh, I, sh I should mention, obviously, the uh, important thing is to write down the collection number, so Smith 1. Make sure to put that in the newspaper somewhere. Otherwise, you won't know what it is when you get back to your lab. So we'll write Smith. So, put it in, and then finally you want to use some kind of strap to hold this down. So we use uh, these things basically where you can, it has a rough edge and you pull it and it stays tight, and that way you can get it nice and tight so it presses well. There are various different things. Some ratchet, you can use sort of like a ratcheting mechanism too. Okay, so now we have the plant pressed. Um, you want to get it as tight as possible. If, if you've built your press sturdily enough, you can kind of stand on it. Pull these really tight. Um, OK, 
Okay, so once it's pressed, uh, the next thing we want to do is maybe collect seeds. Um, if you wanted to get seeds from this individual, you can either take them off the sheet, um, or you can collect them into a little coin envelope like this uh, beforehand. Um, but at any rate, you want to make sure that you have one that corresponds to the sheet that you collected. So in this case, I want to make sure that I have seed from this plant. Uh, there's a lot of seed on the sheet here, so it's not really a problem. Um, but the reason for that is we've found that within a population, um, genetics can be quite variable because these are primarily selfing, uh, and selfing species. So uh, say we want to look at another plant in the population, so we would write Smith 1, plant 2, say. Uh, you can take your little packet and then just kind of take the inflorescence here and then you know, just sort of work the spikelets loose. The ones that are ripe will fall in and the ones that aren't will stay on the stalk, so you don't really want to collect the unripe ones because it'll just lower your germination rate. So you sort of work those all in. Sometimes it's not, not a whole lot. They tend to fall off pretty quickly, so. But usually the ones that do fall in are pretty, pretty good germination, so we make sure to label it. So Smith 1, plant 2, and then we'll move on to another plant. Uh, so here's another part of the same population. So I would write Smith 1, plant 3. Collect that one the same way. And so on until you have usually about at least five is a good number if you want to work on population genetics. And that way you can look at uh, within population variation. Um, the important thing is to have a voucher for the population that you collect. The seed should usually be tied directly to a voucher, that is the seed should come from the voucher because of this tendency for within population variance to be so high to the point that you know, the two things right next to each other can be completely different genetically. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the basic thing. Just make sure to collect a voucher if you're interested in doing any kind of genetic work. Because if you don't, people won't know, uh, you know where it came from or what it looked like in the wild. So it's an important thing. And I hope this video has been helpful.